This is something I really don't understand. You all know I love Singapore, but after living here for quite a while, I discovered some bizarre habits and things that I just find really strange. These are mainly due to cultural differences, so I'm trying to adapt to these, but wanted to share them with you anyways. Number one, people in Singapore queue for everything. I mean, for good things such as the MRT, everyone is standing right in order. There's no mingling and rushing into the MRT. Everyone's standing in queue. But people also queue for things like food and shops. And the weirdest part is that sometimes they don't even know what they're queuing for. So the other day, there was a really big line outside of my building. And I was so curious, like, what are, they, what are these people queuing for? So I went up to like a girl asking, hey, what are you queuing for? And she said, honestly, I don't know, but there was a big rush of getting in queue and I think maybe there's some free stuff and I, I hope to get something for free. So people actually wait in a queue and in line for more than an hour sometimes and I don't even know what for. I find that rather strange. But this also brings me to my next point, which is obsessing over discounts. Singaporeans love a good bargain. They are on the hunt for the best deals and the best discounts, especially on sales like Black Friday or Singles Day. People go crazy over discounts. For example, during great sales like the Great Singapore Shopping Day, malls are packed with Singaporeans hunting from store to store to get the best deal. Coupon collecting is also another very popular thing here. They source newspapers, websites, apps for the best discount deals and then actually travel like through half Singapore just to go to this one store to redeem that coupon and discount. Which in my opinion, I mean, yeah, they're, they're putting in a lot of effort to get these discounts. So they deserve to get things, things cheaper. I also realized that every shop has a lot of discounts and offers over the year. Even at supermarkets, there's just two aisles dedicated to offers, which change from day to day or week to week. So you always know that you find some kind of offers which make you come back to the store, which is quite clever actually. Number three, breakfast at Kopitiams. Where I come from, we don't really go out to eat breakfast and you will rarely find someone to order a breakfast at a cafe before going to work. Everyone like get, grab something at home, maybe a, a bowl of cereal or bread with some jam, but you don't really go out to get any coffee except for takeaway coffee at Starbucks or any other takeaway place. But in Singapore, people really go out to eat breakfast before work. They do that at food courts, so-called coffee chums. These are small coffee shops which serve traditional Singaporean breakfast, which is, for example, a kaya toast with eggs. It usually comes in a whole set, super cheap, $5.50, and you get a kaya toast, which is toast with spread and butter, and two eggs and a kopi. So that's a really good deal for like a full breakfast, which probably keeps you running for quite a while. But people also eat noodles for breakfast and you can really see the, the hawker stalls and the food courts packed with people at 7 a.m. Number four, this is something I really don't understand. People walking around with umbrellas to protect themselves from the sun. Okay, so where I come from, from Zurich, as soon as the sun comes out for 10 minutes, everyone runs outside wanting to get the best tan. And it's honestly a kind of a race of who's gonna get the most tan by the end of the summer. And here it's exactly the opposite. People buy whitening cream. And the other day after a facial, the women told me I cannot use any whitening products for the rest of the week. I don't have any whitening products. I'm the opposite, you know, I buy tanning cream and people in Europe, they buy tanning spray to get an even faster tan. That's really complete opposite. But this preference is actually deeply rooted in Asian culture where it is supposed to be beautiful when you're white and your, your skin is flawless. Any sunspots, again, it's exactly the opposite in Europe or most Western cultures. I mean, the benefit is that Asians have the most beautiful skin and they barely age. Maybe I should start caring a bit more. I don't even apply sunscreen that often. It's very bad. The next thing is something I find super cute. It is really strange for me, but I find it really cute. And that is calling elderly people uncle and auntie. So when I went to a coffee shop with a friend and he said, hey auntie, can we have two chicken rice please? I was like, oh my God, like I didn't know that you were related to the owner of the shop. And he said, no, I've never seen this woman before. And I didn't understand why he would call her auntie. But you actually call all the elderly people auntie and uncle, even if you have never seen them before. That's for taxi drivers, 
restaurant owners, nail salon owners, any, any elderly people. And it's a sign of respect actually. And I find it really cute because it gives you this feeling of, you know, everyone's one big family in Singapore. I'm still a bit hesitant of calling other people auntie and uncle because I don't know, I just, I'm still getting used to it. If you now wanna know more about Singapore and things, for example, I wish I knew before moving here, watch this video up next and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.